Welcome to Austin, Texas, and Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, where the horns are up, and this burnt orange crowd is ready to help Texas hook them. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see a squad from the SEC, the Arkansas Razorbacks, taking on the third-ranked team in the land, the Texas Longhorns. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. The Razorbacks will kick it away first. And he takes this from inside the five. Smashes through. Finds just enough space to cross the 25. Let's mark it at the 27-yard line. The Longhorns offense takes the field. These rivalry games can really get the blood pumping, and we'll see who can manage their emotions best early. Everyone's been waiting for this game, right? You know both of these teams have had this game circled all the way back to the beginning of the offseason, so you got to be able to play under control. With passion, with energy, with hatred, because it's a rivalry game, but keep your emotions in check and making sure I'm controlling what I can control. After picking up a couple at second and eight. Grab behind the line. It's blue. And the defense had that one well covered. Just a short game there. I know you want to prepare for every game the same way, but there's just something different about rivalry games, Jesse. It's because, Reese, I think players are aware that games like this define your legacy as a player. Your record in rivalry games is something that people are going to talk about for years and years down the road. You have got to show up and play your best football in games like this. Good tackle there to stop him short of the first down. It'll bring up a big decision. And I think if you're on defense here, you've got to be alert, right? Are they going for it here on fourth down? Does your defense have to be on the field ready for that? Might they line up in a, a punt formation and try to fake it potentially? You could see that. You know, there are a lot of coaches early in games that are willing to take big risks. So bells and whistles have got to be going off if you're on defense right now. Everybody stays in their lanes well enough, and they stop him at the 31-yard line. So Arkansas's offense has the ball for the first time. As dynamic as this guy is on the outside, Jesse, you know he's going to be cheating that way from his free safety position. You're right, because as a quarterback, I just can't throw to my guy on the perimeter, right? i got to attack the middle of the field. The problem is you've got one of the best safeties in the nation who likes to lay people out. Roaming the middle of the field, reading the quarterback's eyes, and he's got an eye on that receiver out there, too, that's dynamic. So let's see what kind of day he can have. This crowd, full throat, splitting the eardrums and letting them know it's going to be a long day. To the air, it's green. Unloads to the wideout. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical and pass deep. We anticipate this one being much tighter than the last time these two met when it was a blowout, David. And here's the thing. you got an opportunity right now. you got the football early in this game to show you. This is going to be more of the same, Palmer. Well, we talked to both coaching staffs and players, and they're all very aware of what happened the last time these two teams played. So expect everybody's A game today, Reese, you're right. We expect this one to be a lot tighter. And the Razorbacks will send out the punt unit. He'll call for the fair catch here. The Longhorn sending the offense back onto the field. The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. He just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. 
Wide receiver now comes in motion. On second down, wants to throw. Great move there. And it's a first down. They'll mark it at the 44. Well, Reese, you and I were talking about this before the game. How is this defense going to be able to deal with all the speed they have offensively? You saw them just rip off a big play. And, Jesse, now their head's spinning just a little bit. Give up a big chunk play, and it's right back at them. And the Longhorns racing to the line in the hurry up. Looking downfield, it's Ewers. He looks that one in nicely. You'll take this every time. Five yards on the first down play. That was a good read there. Not the biggest gain in the world, David, but take up the space they're going to give you in the zone. Yeah, make it easy, man. Make the right decision. If he's open, get it to him. Get some positive yards. Basically a run play. Now on second down. Wide receiver shows motion. Looking for space. It's Baxter. Nifty little dance step. And he'll run across the sidelines after the good game. I think that was an example of the offensive coordinator trying to help out his quarterback. He's trying to keep these third downs manageable. You know, you throw the ball on second down and it's incomplete. Now you've set up third and long, and now you're set up to fail. Here on third down for this offense. They'll try to run for it. Oh, he just held it poorly, and it's a fumble. Defense falls on the ball. Going to be a turnover. It's so disappointing for the offense, too, because they pride themselves on being physical, right? They wanted to come out in this game. They want to establish the run. They do that each and every week. They had the first down, but David, he just couldn't hold on to it. The defense now creates the takeaway. And speaking of pride, that's what you pride yourself on defense, taking the football away. How many possessions can you steal? He had the first down, but you got there. And more importantly, we work on this all week long. County Fair stripping the football. And the ball is loose and live in the backfield. Oh, and he gets it back, so you can file that one under. Could have been worse. And as a defense, you just want to steal some possessions, create some turnovers. You force the fumble. Well, man, what a break for the offense to fall back on it. Those are, those are moments that you just get a little bit frustrated because it's just it's the luck of a bounce. They got nothing on the last play. It's second and ten. The run from the shotgun. And he's able to bounce off one tackle for a solid pickup. It's really frustrating when you get a guy in his spot. He's in the hole. He's there to do his job. And he can't get the guy on the ground. That's your job. Get him on the ground. You know, especially a guy that's not a huge back. You've got to make that tackle. You can't make it easy on the offense when now they got a manageable situation. On the move, it's Green. Fires to the wideout. On target to the left. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. That's a really nice-looking throw, and I'll tell you, he fits in great with this offense because there's been this philosophical shift recently in the SEC offensively. It used to be you had to run the football. I formation, three yards in a cloud of dust if you wanted to win, but today, though, you have got to be able to throw if you're going to win. Think about all the great offensive play callers now in the SEC, all the Heisman Trophy winners that have played recently at the QB position. you got to do it through the air, and this guy in Arkansas gives them a chance. Man, if I'm a defense, i got to find a way to get some more pressure on the quarterback or disrupt their timing and their rhythm. I can't give them these big chunk plays through the air. i got to be maybe a little bit more aggressive or do something a little bit different. Now the chance to pay off that big play from just outside the five. Fast motion from the offense. Quick pass on the fly motion. And he was just showing off all of the slick moves before the defense finally got him on the ground. And these little touch passes, man, they're just the easiest completions ever for quarterbacks. Palmer, I bet you would have loved being able to just flip it forward. That counts as to your completion percentage, which is good. And then it's all run right after the catch, so pretty easy for a QB. You wouldn't have been the only All-American in this booth, David, if I were allowed to pull, have push passes <laughs> when I was playing quarterback. I'll tell you. Into the house. Touchdown, Razorbacks. 
They can use this first score to sort of set the tone, guys, in this rivalry matchup. Man, doesn't this feel good to come out, score early, get the crowd involved, get the nerves out of the way, Palmer, when you're playing in a big rivalry game? Yeah, and I feel like momentum's always a big thing in any game, but in rivalry games, it's that much more important because everybody is going to feed off that first score now. PAT unit on the field. And the extra point makes it 7 0. So that scoring drive took only six plays. That makes the score Arkansas 7, Texas 0. Number 36. His access. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. As it turns out, the fumble on that last drive set up the touchdown, David. And there's no bigger stat in football than turnovers. You turn the football over, they turn it into points. Jesse, that is not a recipe for success. Good news, though, they get another chance, right? They can make amends with this drive right here. That's all that's important. You've got to execute and you've got to lock in. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. They'll run it to the right. And they make the stop, and that will likely bring us to the end of the first quarter. And runs like that are like body blows in a boxing match. Four, five, six-yard gains early turn into 20, 30, 40-yard gains later. They really wear down defenses, and they test their physicality. They are lined up and ready to go and get things started here in the second. A third and long coming up here. Back to throw, it's Ewers. Receiver looks it in, it's complete. They make the stop, but the sweet rolling catch is ready to give them a first down. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And of course he said the open one, but we know who he really wants to go to on third down. The best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously, the politically correct answer. But you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond and that trust. And they try to run inside, and there is nowhere to go. And just a great job by the defense being stout. All right, that's your job. Be stout up front, stuff in the run play, make them get in more passing situations, but do not let them run the football. That's 101. Stop the run first. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Motion from the offense. The running back has it. And he's able to bounce off one tackle, but still not a whole lot of running room. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play, and we'll take a break to check him out. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. At midfield, he's got room. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. Well, we know this guy is special, and because of that, his quarterback is looking to him on critical down and distances. There on that third down, there was no question. It wouldn't have mattered if he was single covered, double covered, man zone. That's where he was going with it, and the big time playmaker outside picks up the first. Leaves it with the back. He has the first and still on his feet. He'll be down at the four-yard line after that terrific run. Man, this is a guy who just seems to get better as the game goes on. What a run getting his offense down close to the goal line. So nice creating explosive runs in the run game. Now you're getting in the red inside the five. Go punch this in and get a touchdown. And the Longhorns have it with a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. And will cruise into the end zone. Touchdown, Longhorn! 
I can hear the defensive coordinator in the next move yelling, wrap up, you have to wrap up. Bring your full stuff from your defensive coach. You know what? Sometimes the guy's just better than you. He makes a play and gets a game Lining up for the PAT. Right down the boulevard. They march 79 yards on the drive, and they finish it off with the score from the four. All tied up and just about set to kick it away. He'll start the return inside his five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. And Arkansas ready to send out this offense. Boy, David, they would love to stack another touchdown on top of that last drive. And this offense did such a good job on the last drive. Everything in rhythm, moved the ball down the field, didn't make those mistakes, Jesse, and they need to do it again on this one. Yeah, you're right. They had the defense on their heels. You wonder what sort of communication was going on that sideline. What sort of changes were they able to make because they got to stop the bleeding right now. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. They'll go right back to him. He's got a yard out to the 30-yard line. And sticking to the run. I tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running the football, you can tell. This is where you make the money on the drive. Ball at the 30, it's third and short. They'll try to pick up the first through the air. Caught near the sticks, it's Armstrong. He steps out of bounds, but he's got enough for a first down. Third down, a lot of times, it comes down to not necessarily who's the most open, who do you trust the most? No, it's not about the X's and the O's. It's about the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And when my guy's better than you and I get you matched up out wide and I know I trust you, I'm finding you. The lone back's got it. Sweet feet on the move. And he's brought down after a nice game. Well, he shows you his speed and his power on that run. As far as I can think back to, Arkansas football always comes down to being able to run the football on offense. It's about grinding and wearing the opponent down. They always seem to be able to recruit outstanding athletes at that position. This guy is no different. Moving the running back, forcing the defense to adjust. Throws for the tight end. He's open on the right. Ripping through the defense and getting it all the way down to the 24-yard line. Man, this offense is so dangerous, Reese. They've got dudes all over the field that can make plays. There's a big gainer in the pass game. You get a chunk of yards like that, now the defense is really on its heels. The Razorbacks are in the hurry up. To the air, it's green. Quick strike complete. They stop him almost immediately. Short gain there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm gonna take big shots down the field too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second five, third and five, than it is when we start getting those long yarded situations. Fights through the pile and picks up a couple down to the 16. And those physical runs take a toll. It might not be a big game now, but down the road, third, fourth quarter, late in the ball games, they tend to turn into bigger runs. This crowd knows when to bring it. To the ground to try to move the chains. Wrestled to the ground after picking up the first down. Well, it just seems like everything is working for the offense on this drive. Another nice game, this time on the ground. And the Razorbacks line it up with a first and goal. He'll set up to throw. Going for six. Throw to the end zone, picked off. Most defenses are lucky if you have one good covering corner. Fewer are lucky if you have two. They've got three DBs, three corners that can play at the same time in their nickel package that they feel can go mano a mano with anyone in the country. And you saw it on that last play coming away with the pick. And 
here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. This could be a real turning point in the game. They scored a touchdown. They got a stop. And now a chance to break the tie. Yeah, this offense has got it cooking, man. And how about the defense? Great job getting that stop, getting the football right back to the hot hand. Now this offense, Palmer, has a chance to take the lead. You can see the offense, too. They understand the situation right now. They were jonesing on the sidelines to get another opportunity to run back on the field. They are ready to drive this ball and go score. Second down here, and maybe they've got time to get one more snap off before the two-minute warning. The clock has stopped, and we've reached the two-minute warning before halftime. This offense has a second down play. Looking to throw, it's Ewers. Immediately fires to the middle. Brought down at the 33, but not before he gets 10. Really nice job by the quarterback and wide receiver. This is why you do film work. This is why you throw on air all offseason. I know I get zone coverage. I know exactly where I'm breaking. I know exactly where to deliver the football. Nice throw, nice catch. Clock stops momentarily for the first down. They'll hurry to the line. He's going to pass. Got his man in the middle. He's brought down quickly. Minimal gain there. Still a bit short of the first down. And I love when my quarterback sees zone and knows exactly where to go with the football. Sees the wide receiver running the drag route, knows when to throw it, pulls the trigger for the easy completion. Quick tempo, no huddle off, and second down, clock's running. He's looking to throw. Fires to the middle. Complete downfield. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. These guys are called matchup guys. They're not the biggest guys on the field, but they're going to win. Short, and they're going to catch the ball, and they're going to make yards after the catch. You can tell those are the type of guys in college football that are starting to get maximized and used a lot more than they were in the past. To the air on first down. Finds his big tight end. A huge gain on that one before he ran out of bounds, and he has the first down. It's amazing in college football, the tight end position and how much it's changed. Back in the day, you're a blocking guy. Maybe you catch a flat route. Today, these guys have athleticism, and you just saw it from that dude after the catch on that last one. They ripped off a huge chunk, and now a little chunk is needed to pay it off. From the gun. Fires into the end zone. And it's caught. Touchdown, Texas. I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. I'll tell you what, keep that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. And it looks as if they've buzzed down. Replay wants to have another peek at that last play. And the play will stand after a replay just does a little double checking to make sure. And the PAT gives him a 14-7 lead. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And they closed the deal with the seven-yarder for the score. So they got the touchdown, and as they kick off, really important for the defense to shut them down here. Looking for an alley from inside his own 10. And the coverage team able to make the tackle. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. So late in the half, this is really an opportunity, David, maybe to swing the momentum in their favor. Dang right. There's no time to be conserved. If we're a little bit down, listen, I just think this is a point with the offense that they can prove. Like, we're here, we're going to create something now that we can build on in the second half. Coach said all week he wanted to be aggressive. This is a great opportunity to show that right now. At the end of the first half, try and generate some momentum, score some points before going into halftime. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. They'll throw it on first down. Right down the middle. It's caught. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. That was a nice pickup, running the drag route and finding that quiet, soft spot in the zone. 
Yeah, drag routes not only work against man coverage, they work against zone, too. If you can find the soft spot and the quarterback gets it to him early, he can turn up field, and you saw that right there. The Razorbacks will have it first and ten. Looking to throw, it's green. Throws to the wideout. Tremendous awareness along the sideline and the ability to get the foot down for the big pickup. He's just winning that matchup in the slot every time. And when you put him in the slot, Reese, he's closer to the quarterback. It's an easier throw. We can run in, we can run out, and really take advantage of his versatility of the guy in that slot position. They've marched to the red zone, and here they go. It's complete! Here's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. Just a few seconds remaining here as they try to put something up before halftime. Looking to throw. Good job to toss that ball out of bounds and avoid the loss. Can the defense stop them again on second and goal? He's looking to throw. And it's incomplete. It was wild, high and wide on that one. It's tough to throw the ball down here in the red zone, man. These windows, they open and they close so quickly. You've got to have great timing. And right now, this offense doesn't have it. They've thrown two straight incompletions, setting up third down. And it's third down, but they're going to go ahead and try the field goal and try to get points before the break. Oh, the attempt is no good. And they couldn't cut into the lead. It's still a seven-point game. And that's just a chip shot. That's just a field goal they got to make, guys. And holding on to a first-half lead, this offense will play it safe, take a knee, and head to the locker room. As expected, looks as if they'll run it out and go into halftime with a lead. That's going to wrap up the first half here, and now we join Kevin with the halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. Talk about a first half from that dude out of the backfield. He's been a total game-changer. And how many top plays moments have we seen on missed tackles alone? Video game moves from one of the shiftiest players in all of college football. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. The Longhorns will kick it away to crank up the second half. From inside his own 10, he'll try to help out their field position. Just never had a chance to shake loose, and he'll be brought down at the 24. Dropping back, it's Green. He's right on target. Moves up to the 34-yard line, give him a 10-yard pickup. Well, that was a dart right there. He's going to give Arkansas a chance because in the old days in the SEC, you had to run the football if you were going to win championships. Today... You better be able to get it done through the air. When you think of all the great play callers in this league and all the Heisman Trophy winners this league has seen at the QP position in recent years, you better be able to do it throwing the ball. This guy, I think, gives Arkansas a chance with his arm. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it. Now it's just going to be a passing game. And the Razorbacks want to move quickly. Running behind that left side. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. Yeah, when you get penetration by that defense right away, and there's no way to cut at all for that back, he gets destroyed right away. No way that play was going to be successful. Way too much penetration. Better find the ear plugged. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. Makes the grab down the middle. And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. 
You gotta love that on defense. One of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. Whoop de doo. You set up fourth and long. You're gonna get the ball back. Go get some water and sell it. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. On the move, it's Bolden. That's a perfect example of not settling for a fair catch. Pick up whatever yard you can and help out the offense. Wide out in motion. Quick pass on the jet motion. The defense wouldn't let him lose there, and it was a completion, but they lost yardage. Really good job by the defense seeing it and going and getting it. Nice job understanding the touch pass. It could happen. Those guys go in motion, man. I got to understand, safety's got to see that, start flying down, getting ready to play that. Nice job by the defense being ready for that play. Let's see what they've got on second down. Pre-snap motion in the backfield. Looking downfield, it's Ewers. Nowhere close on that one as he got drilled trying to deliver the football, and now they face third down. He didn't have a whole lot of time to get rid of that one. The defense was all over him right after the snap. No wonder that thing fell incomplete. Now facing a third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. And he's brought down after a huge completion. Well, how about the offense setting that play up? We've seen earlier in the game a couple shorter throws just trying to suck those safeties closer to the line of scrimmage, anticipating that they would get an opportunity to take a shot. They called the perfect play at the perfect time right there. Coming out on first down with the play fake. Looking down the middle. And he intercepts it. No room to return, but no problem after making a play like that. And they'll have it at the 25. And you don't see this very often. The big defensive lineman. You see these guys rush the quarterback most of the time. But how confusing is it, Palmer, when it looks like they're rushing, they drop in coverage and make the big interception? Well, I don't think that quarterback thought he could even make the play. How about the eye-hand coordination and his ability to snatch the football out of the air? I mean, that was crazy athleticism, well-deserved. That's going to make the, uh, the highlight reel for sure. How about this backer in pass coverage and bringing the big hit stick with him, too? As a tight end, if you're going to be good in the passing game, you've got to be able to feel the windows when defenses play zone coverage. And he did a really good job of that right there. He didn't rush. He didn't hurry. He took his time, found the soft spot, and gave his quarterback an easy place to throw the football. Dropping back, it's green. And the pass is incomplete and charged loose by the hit. Looked like the offense had a chance for a big play there, but the running back just could not reel that ball in. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. They'll stick to the ground looking for the marker. Love to see these third down conversions on offense and they're out to their own 39-yard line. And that's all you want, right? You want that first down. Uh, understand the situation. Understand I got to get north and south. Get a first down. Get a new set of downs. The Razorbacks have it with a first and ten. To the ground. He's got it again. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. They tried to run the counter, but absolutely nothing doing. And those counter plays take a little longer to develop sometimes. You're usually pulling one or two guys, and that penetration in the backfield can kill you and get to the running back before he gets started. On second down, looking to throw. With the catch, it's Sategna. And he'll step across the sidelines after making a good gain on that one. I like the decision by the quarterback here. Just get the ball out of your hands, get it to your playmaker. A lot of times he'll dance and make even bigger plays than he did here, but it was still a positive game. They'll come to the line at the 42, facing a third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. Can't make the connection on third down thanks to that tough, hard-nosed pass defense. And now it's fourth down. 
Well, after struggling so much in the first half, you thought they would have made some adjustments here at halftime to see if they can open up this passing game. But early on in the second half, they're just not really able to get that done. Incompletion on third down in your own end. You're expecting them to punt. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Fair catch called for and made. Here comes the Texas offense. That last drive was promising for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you've got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game, if you're going to win. And, David, they've got to be able to eliminate the middle mistakes. Yeah, and I don't think you get conservative or play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Right back to the well. Got the first down and more. All the way out to the 38-yard line. It's a gain of 15. And listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, I love teams that commit to the run, and when it's successful, keep running the rock. Yeah, David, I think this offensive line right now, they've got a lather going. They're really sort of getting in the groove and flow of this game. They're just getting tremendous push at the point of attack. It seems like every single time they decide to run the ball. Going to run it. It's Baxter. That's a really good job by the defense, wrapping them up, getting them on the ground. Take away that run game. Make them one-dimensional, put them in passing situations. Really good job by the defense. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Wide receiver now comes in motion. They've got him looking run. Now they're going to throw it. Caught over the middle. It's Bolden. Boy, did he look as if he was going to go. Gets it down to the 37. Really good job holding that pass in. You know, I know Texas is a place a lot of people think about great DBs, and they've had a lot of really good running backs, too. I think the receiver position is one, though, that they want to build a legacy around. This guy right here, he's really stepping up in this game today, and he's a guy that Longhorn fans, they need to keep their eyes on for years to come. Wide receiver shows motion. Catch in the middle. It's Bolden. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. Who says in the RPO pass game you can't throw anything vertically downfield, right? It doesn't all have to be screens and throws at the line of scrimmage. There's a good example of a quarterback pushing the ball vertically downfield after the play fake to the running back. Fast motion from the offense. The give to the left. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Nice play by the defense, but now is a time they've got to be more consistent. They allowed this running back to go off in that first half, and moving forward now, they've got to try and take this running back away. The negative play leaves them with second and 12. Guys, it is Texas who holds the lead. They've done the work to build a nice cushion now to bring it home as we check out the stats after three quarters. Not only is the scoreboard on their side, but so too is time as we open the fourth. the line it's golden and they pick up just a few on that completion our coach said to never go broke taking a profit take what's there take the positive yards and never complain really need to pick up this conversion and avoid having to settle for the field goal He's brought down, but there's a flag on the play. Let's see if it's in. So the penalty will not be enforced. The defense declines and stands on the result of the play. 
And now on fourth down, they will put it on the shoulders of the kicker to save them with his foot. Splits the upright right down the middle. And they'll push that lead out a little further. You know, it's funny, in an age where there's so many college football analytics and everybody wants to go for it on the fourth down, at the end of the day, it still comes down to managing the game. Good decision by the head coach here in the fourth quarter. By kicking that field goal, you've now made it a two-possession game. Your chances of winning this thing have now gone way up. After putting three on the board, the kickoff unit ready to go. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. And Arkansas ready to send out this offense. That last drive fizzled out, Jesse. They had to punt it. Yeah, they did. And David, they're just going to have to do a better job this time around erasing the mental mistakes. And just trying to solve the defensive riddle, understanding what they're trying to do to you and attack them. So much for the tough field position. One play, and you're already to the 35. They'll ride the hot hand. Breaks the tackle. Got enough for the first. Still running at the 40. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. Well, the defense knew coming into this one, Reese, that this team was going to try to use their speed and take advantage of it, and they did right there. Nice gain on the run play to the right. Found plenty of running room in that defense. They've got to find a way to get there, make the tackle in the open field. Yeah, and they got to do a good job with their eyes, finding the football, and they've got to get a lot of bodies to this guy because he is fast. He wants to throw. Snagged in the middle. It's Washington. And the defense settled in to stop that one for a short game. You just get the feeling this defense is going to make it hard on them, right? They've got the lead. It's late. And they're going to try to tackle everybody inbounds. Offense is going to have to really work for this and be smart. you got to attack the sidelines. you got to throw first down. you got to keep this thing moving vertically down the field. Looking to throw. It's green. Unloads to the wideout. Complete to the left. They get him down, but this offense is set up first and goal from the nine. And I love the awareness by the wide receiver on that play because I'm not sure that route was supposed to be that deep. You got to wonder if the receiver decided maybe to adjust the route a little bit to make sure that he got the first down. First and goal, and this feels like their chance to make a game of it. He wants to throw it. And the timing just a hair off. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. He's looking to throw. Snags it. And he will score. Touchdown, Arkansas. Well, if the momentum hadn't shifted before, it certainly has now. It has, and now you got some game pressure, right? That's beautiful. Now the defense comes out, get you a stop, get aggressive, but the offense a little bit of pressure now because they know if the ball goes back to the other side, they could lose this ball game. He'll try to tack on one more. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And they cap things off with a nine-yard touchdown pass. The kickoff team out there getting set. On the run from inside his own five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. So Texas has it again, and here comes the offense. They're going to throw it to start the drive. Makes the grab. It's Bond. They make the stop, trying to pick up just a little bit at a time to get to that first down marker. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly, and that's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. The play-action fake. 
Got a man. It's Bond. Really good job to pick up a chunk of yardage and get it out to the 39-yard line. Using him out of the slot, he has just been unstoppable. And I love putting dynamic athletes in the slot that I can move around, that I can put in motion, that I can, I can make him go in or out. I can put him off the ball so you can't get hands on him. And they've really featured this guy today. That's caught. It's Bond. Okay, you throw a little hitch route. Nice job getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Wide receiver, quarterback. Nice job being on the same page. Nice completion, nice catch. Trying to get a rhythm in the passing game. Now on second down. They move the tight end all over. Out of the gun. The inside handoff looking for a crease. And the defense makes the stop after a minimal game. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure right now on this down if you're on offense because your last two plays have gone nowhere. You know the defense just needs to get the football back to give their team an opportunity to go win the game. So you're probably going to have to throw to get this first down. A lot of pressure here on the quarterback there. Yeah, and, and how I throw, I think, is important. This is a time where I love moving up my quarterback outside the pocket, making it an easy throw or let him run the football. And if he doesn't get it, the clock still ticks. It's still my favorite. Well, I think this running back has proved in this game here tonight that he can be counted on and relied on, right? In a big moment right here, late in the game, when they need to run the ball to ice this thing, he's able to deliver. The Longhorns have their offense in high gear. They'll run it to keep this clock grinding. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. That linebacker was a heat-seeking missile, and the heat that he sought was the ball carrier. Yeah, great job, great feel. Linebackers are making all the calls in the defense and understanding when I need to come through that gap and come through with bad intentions. Those guys are usually 245 pounds of heat-seeking missile. Movement here from the tight end. Now the play fade. Got his man quickly. And how about that catch and run? So dangerous, this guy. Love the play call offensively because you've got the lead. The defense expects you to run the ball. You just did it the previous play, so there you dial up play action, set up an easy throw, and you keep the clock ticking. Defense showing plenty of pre-snap movement of their own. The Longhorns have it with a first and ten. A little misdirection and the handoff on the counter. What a tough-minded, hard-edged run. He gets it to the 24. Defense uses a timeout quickly trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Wouldn't be surprised to see them go right back to the run on second down and maybe put this thing away. On the run, it's Baxter. And they drag him down, but not before he picks up the first down. Quick timeout call by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. And the defense in desperation mode, trying to hang on to give their team a chance. A first down run in the red zone. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. The run up the middle, trying to find its way to the goal line. And how about that interior defense stuffing the run for nothing? Man, I think my thought process needs to be points are good. Because if I get a field goal here, that's fine. I take the lead by more than a field goal. They got to go the length of the field. But I also want to run this clock. Let it continue to work. But the goal is to get a touchdown. So let's see what this offense dials up next. Grabbed in the backfield. It's Bolden. And they knock him down in the backfield. Outstanding play by the defense. This is one of those unique situations in a game as a head coach. You're trying to feel the momentum. And what's your confidence in your quarterback? Because you've got fourth. You're in field goal range. But you've got the weapons to get one more completion and ice this thing. So do you kick the field goal or do you go for it? 
It is true as he puts three on the board. The last thing you want to do here is give up a big return, pin them back, and then the defense can just stop them from scoring a touchdown. On the move from inside is five. And the returner will be knocked down. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. Time's running out, Jesse. They're in a world of trouble, but as long as you've got a few ticks, there's a chance. And they've got a quarter. And the pressure will get there. The sack. Down he goes in the waiting moments. That could be a costly play.